Let's take a look at troubleshooting the electric through frame slide out system. Now, what we did here is we put together a list of problems that you might see in the field. And on top of that, we put together a checklist that you can systematically go through and solve those problems. Now, for the first three, the room doesn't move, the room moves slowly, or the room moves but stops in the middle. First thing that we would do is we would check the battery, make sure it's at a full charge and that it's maintained at full capacity. But we'd also take that a step further and check the wiring in your system for loose wires, disconnected wires, or corrosion on the connectors themselves. So that's the first thing we would do. Now, for the second thing, let's go over here and take a look at this. You check for obstructions outside the unit and inside the unit. So if you, if you look at here, you can see branches and sticks that are on top of the room. That might bind the room from opening or closing. And then also on the inside of the room, you might have pillows, teddy bears, or even luggage like the picture shows that might be obstructing the room from moving in and out. So double check both of those. Then you'll also check for adjustments. Now, adjustments can be vertical adjustments, horizontal, in and out stops, or synchronization. Now, you check these adjustments by doing a visual inspection. So let's go out to the bay and take a look at what that visual inspection consists of. So what we've done is we've taken this slide out and moved out, out a little bit so we can take a look at some components inside. So what, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the horizontal adjustment inside the cutout of the slide out is equal on both sides. So we're looking at this wiper seal is here and making sure that it has good contact on the outside of the slide out and that it's not crimped in or folded or broken. Any of those, all the, the seal is nice and tied up against there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the other side and look at the other wiper. And again, we're looking at the wiper seal is all the way up and down on the slide out, making sure that that contact is there and it's not folded or broken or rotted. Now what we're going to do is we have the slide out open and we can take a look at the components inside. So we're looking at this stop can. You, you see this flange here on the stop can. Make sure that this is in good condition um, and not damaged. Now you're also gonna look at these head assemblies. See that you have the room bar here and the head assembly here. You're making sure that there's 55% contact between the head assembly and the room bar bracket. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this room in and make sure that the horizontal and the vertical adjustments are, are set proper. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna watch for synchronization. We're looking at the left side and the right side of the unit and that they're moving at the exact same time. Now, when this goes all the way in, next we're going to be looking for vertical adjustment. Now, the top of the RV slide out is going to touch first and then the bottom is gonna suck in. Now, that is a proper seal. So now that the room is actually uh, sealed against the unit, we're going to take a look at these bulb seals and make sure that they are sealed up against the unit and that 50% of that seal is pressed up against that and it's forming a good seal on the unit. And we'll check this other one too and make sure that it is sealed up against the unit. Now, if, if it's not, um, all of the adjustments that we've talked about, we've talked about vertical adjustments, we've talked about horizontal adjustments. If one side is not sealed up against there, then you know that it's not synchronized and you're gonna have to go to that idler arm and adjust that. Now we're on the inside of the unit now and we're taking a look at the seals for the out stops. So when you run the unit all the way out, 
this seal here is going to seal up against this flange on the slide out itself. Now what we can do is we can look at this seal for damage or anything that could be um, obstructing the path of the slide out. So it, you're going to want this seal to seal up against this flange on the slide out itself. All right, so now that we did the visual inspection, if everything looks good, it could just be an actuator or motor. Now for the last problem that I wanted to cover, it is the motor runs, but the room doesn't move. Now there could be a couple different issues there that cause that symptom. So let's take a look at it. Now for the first example here, we have a nylock nut and a jam nut, and they're nicely tight up against the front bracket and it's gonna drive that room in and out no problem. However, what could happen is the nylock nut or the jam nut could be loose or missing, and what'll happen is that actuator will drive in and out of the front bracket without, without moving the room itself. So just double check the nylock nut and the jam nut that they're actually there and that they're tied up against the front bracket. For the second example, we have this gear pack, and you can see the spur gear inside there. Now, if the spur gear teeth are loose or missing, what'll happen is, is that the drive mechanism will move the gear pack, but what will happen is, is it won't mesh against the drive rack on the inner arm, so the gear will move, but the arm won't move, and the arm is attached to the room, so the room won't move. In the event that you have an electrical problem, perhaps your battery is dead, you're gonna to wanna to utilize the manual override feature that's built into the through frame slide out system. Now there's a couple different versions of the manual override, but this one right here we're gonna look at has an extension rod that attaches to the electric actuator motor and that extends through the I-beam here. So it gives you access outside the frame. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna unhook that battery so you don't have electric back feed preventing damage to the system. Now go ahead and connect the manual override crank to the extension rod. Now you're going to turn this counterclockwise to extend the room out and clockwise to retract the room all the way in. Now pay attention to the in and out stops. When you crank that all the way in, you'll feel the resistance there. Go ahead and stop the room is completely retracted in. You can over crank this and damage the system. On the other version of manual override, you're going to not have that connector rod that goes through the I-beam. You're just gonna have a hex nut attached to the electric actuator motor. And you're going to have to access this through the underbelly. But everything else applies. You're just gonna utilize a ratchet here and attach it to the hex nut so you're gonna do clockwise to retract the room and counterclockwise to extend it. Most of the time, you're gonna be retracting this in so you can travel with it. So make sure you get your travel locks on your room so you can get this into a repair facility.